we now consider polynomial equations. So when we're looking at lines and linear equations, our equations had numbers. We had x, we had y, and we had no higher powers. So now we want to allow for higher powers. In the study of polynomial equations, we'll need to know how to manipulate polynomials. So that's what we start in this section. Now, definitions. First, we have a monomial. So we've looked at these. So for a monomial, what we'll have is we'll have a number, then we'll have a variable or several variables, all raised to powers which are zero or positive. So things we can have are like 3x squared, a half x cubed, we could have the number three. The parts that go into a monomial, okay, the number out in front, okay, here I have 3x squared, so the three is what we'll call the coefficient of x squared. The degree of our monomial is going to be the exponent on our variable. Okay, so here degree is equal to two. As a special case, if I have just a number, we say the degree is equal to zero. Okay, if you want to be consistent, I could think of three as being three times x to the zero. Okay, a non-zero thing raised to the zero is always equal to one. As a special case, okay, if we have more than one variable, for the degree, I'll take the sum of the exponents. So here, the degree is going to be equal to, okay, I have x squared y to the fourth, so I'll take two plus four, degree is going to be equal to 6. Okay, that'd say the coefficient of x squared y to the fourth is equal to 10. We step up. So if we consider binomials, these are going to be sums of monomials, just two terms. So for instance, we have things like 3x squared minus 2x. If I pull this apart, okay, for instance, the coefficient of x squared is equal to 3. Okay, just like in the previous case, coefficient of x, you can think of this minus 2x as being a plus minus 2 times x, so the coefficient's a minus 2. In this case, when we talk about degree, degree is just going to be the highest power, or the largest exponent on each term. So here, note, having x by itself is the same as x to the first power, so the largest exponent here is going to be a 2. So the degree of 3x squared minus 2x is equal to 2. In general, if I take any sum of monomials, that's what we'll call polynomial. So for instance, I have something like 2x cubed plus x minus 4. Same rules apply, so the degree is going to be the highest power. So in this case, we have exponents 3, 1, and 0. So the degree is going to be equal to 3. Then we can just run down, take a look at what the coefficients are. So coefficient of x cubed is equal to 2. Coefficient of x squared, well, note we don't have an x squared here, but if I want to insist on a coefficient, I can think of that as being 0 times x squared, and it just drops out of the notation. So the coefficient of x squared is equal to 0. Coefficient of x, okay, that's going to be equal to a 1. Okay, x is equal to 1 times x. Coefficient of 1 is just going to be the constant term, which is minus 4. We want to get proficient at manipulating polynomials. So the operations that we're interested in, addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. So we'll handle the first three in this video, save the last one till the next one, which requires special care. Now, for addition, if I want to add two polynomials together, we just want to group together the like exponents. So for instance, if I took 3n cubed plus 5n, okay, add that quantity to 2n cubed minus 2n, what I would do, I would take a look at our first term here. I have an n cubed. I look for n cubed terms over here, and we add. So I'm going to add 3 plus a 2. Then I move on to the next term. I have a 5n. I look for n terms over here. We have a minus 2n. We put those together. And then I notice that takes care of all terms. So I want to make sure I don't leave any of our terms out. We add coefficients, so I'll have 5n cubed plus a 3n. And then that's our answer. If you want slightly nicer bookkeeping, what I'll do is I'll put each polynomial on its own line, okay, and then I just line up the powers and columns. Okay, so in this case, line up the n cubed terms, line up the n terms, and then just add down. 
Let's try another example. So we'll add x cubed minus x plus 2 to 3x squared minus x plus 3. I go through term by term, grouping like exponents. So I start with x cubed. We note there are no x cubed terms over here, so we just set it aside. Proceed. I have a minus x here, a minus x here. Put those together. Then I have a 2 and a 3. Then that takes care of the first term. We note we haven't used up this 3x squared in the second term, so I have to set that aside also. We do our addition. I get x cubed minus 2x plus 5 plus 3x squared. It's good form to put our exponents in descending order. So I'll write this as x cubed plus 3x squared minus 2x plus 5, and that's my final answer. We try this the other way. So we're going to try to line things up in terms of columns and then add down. So we have x cubed minus x plus 2. I'm missing an x squared term here, so I'll just leave a space. Go to 3x squared minus x plus 3. Okay, same idea. We have no x cubed, so we leave a space. Now things are lined up, so we could just add down the columns. And then we get x cubed plus 3x squared minus 2x plus 5, which agrees with what we had the other way. Now, we move on to subtraction. Same idea, only difference. Okay, we note a minus b is equal to a plus minus b. So we're just going to distribute that minus sign, and then we just add as we did before. So for instance, if we take 3n cubed plus 5n minus the quantity 2n cubed minus 2n, I'll distribute this minus sign to each term. So I'll get a minus 2n cubed. Okay, we have a minus, a minus 2n, which is a plus 2n. And now we just add as we did before. Okay, so this minus sign becomes a plus. So I go through, group like exponents. Okay, so we have 3 minus 2n cubed. I have 5 plus 2n, and we get n cubed plus 7n. Of course, we could do it the other way. So I have 3n cubed plus 5n. Okay, I line up my columns. I have minus parentheses 2n cubed minus 2n. It's important to keep the parentheses here before you distribute. If you drop the parentheses, okay, the common error is to just put the minus sign on the first term, but not the second term. So you want to be careful with that. I have to write everything out again to show the distribution. So I have 3n cubed plus 5n. Okay, the minus sign goes to the 2n cubed, goes to the minus 2n, which becomes a plus 2n. Then I just add down the columns. And then that agrees with what we had the other way. Let's try this one. So we have x cubed minus x plus 2 minus quantity 3x squared minus x plus 3. Same idea as before, okay, except now we're going to distribute the minus sign. So I'll have a minus 3x squared plus x minus 3. We add as before. So x cubed is by itself. Minus x now goes with plus x. 2 goes with minus 3. Then the minus 3x squared is by itself. So we just tack that on at the end. We do our addition for coefficients. So I have x cubed plus 0x minus 1 minus 3x squared. Okay, note that the 0x will just drop out of our expression. Then I'm going to put the minus 3x squared as the second term since we're going to put our exponents in descending order. So x cubed minus 3x squared minus 1. We do this the other way. Okay, x cubed minus x plus 2 minus 3x squared minus x plus 3 in parentheses. I distribute the minus sign through the second term. Okay, so we have minus 3x squared plus x minus 3. I can just add down the columns, and then we get the same answer. One final note. Okay, when working with parentheses, we always start from the inside, work our way out. So, for example, if I had 4n cubed minus n cubed plus 4. Okay, this is in parentheses, this is in parentheses, and then we add 3n cubed start with the innermost parentheses. So here I'm going to distribute this minus sign through the n cubed plus 4. That becomes a minus n cubed minus 4. I could do work here. So that'll become 3n cubed minus 4. And now I can go to the outside. So I'll have a 6n cubed minus 4 for my final answer. 